So when word came out in 2008, this guy was making a boxing comeback at age 60. Half the people in my media circle said, who's this guy? And the other half said, I can't believe he's still fighting. So today we're talking with the Curious Case, who I consider one of the toughest fighters of all time. He fought for decades, almost 50 years, only got knocked out once, sure he lost a lot, a lot, a lot, lost a lot of fights, but he fought all the big key contenders of his division in light welterweight and welterweight, one of the biggest Jewish champions of all time, uh, one of the heroes of the Bronx and that great era of boxing between 1965 and about 1985. Of course, we're talking about the late, great Saul Mambi. Now, Saul uh, passed away on December 20th, uh, 2019. He fought as a professional between 1969 and 2008. Now, he held one of the most prestigious titles of the 1980s, the WBC Super Lightweight Crown from 1980-82, when there was around 50 contenders from lightweight, uh, junior welterweight or super lightweight, to welterweight that, that were in the mix, and everybody was there including Roberto Duran, Esteban de Jesus, Antonio Cervantes, quite a, quite a few champions, former champions. Now, born in South Bronx, New York, he was a child of Victoria, who was of Spanish descent, and his father, Robert, who's from Jamaica. He converted with his family to Judaism at age four. He went to Hebrew school at the Bronx Mount Horeb Synagogue. Now, Mamby became interested in boxing while on vacation visiting uh, Jamaica. He began his boxing career in 1963 at the age of 16, fighting in the Golden Gloves in 1965 and 66. He compiled an amateur record of 25 and 5 before turning pro in 1969. Now, Mamby was also a veteran. He served the U.S. Army in the Vietnam War in 1968. Now, he was moving up the ranks and he was a top contender, top 25, for a number of years until the worm turned for him. He held the WBC Super Lightweight title once, starting his two-and-a-half-year reign in February of 1980 by going to all places South Korea to stop titleist King Sang Yoon in a 14 round. At the time, uh, title fights were 15 rounds. This was long before the Dooku Kim uh, uh, controversy. Now, after that, he made five successful defenses, traveling to Indonesia and Nigeria in the process. He stopped former WBC lightweight champion Esteban de Jesus, the old rival of Roberto Duran, in the 13th round of July 1980 on the Holmes Ledoux undercard and decision Termite Watkins over 15 on the Holmes Ali undercard. He won a 15 round out over Joe Kibiani on yet another undercard for Larry Holmes fight, this time against Leon Spinks. He then went to Indonesia to the decision Thomas Americo. In his last bout before leaving the ring as champion, he decisioned Obisa Nawat, uh, Nawatkpa in Nigeria. Now, he was to fight Aaron Pryor for the WBA merge belt in the suburb of 82, but instead fought and lost his WC title by split to Leroy Haley in June of that year. Controversial decision. I saw the fight. I had Mamby winning. Now, he will play the role of world title challenger twice more, once in a rematch with Haley in February 83, when he lost a 12-round United decision. He then challenged new champion Billy Costello in November 84, but lost another 12-round verdict. Now, other boxers Bambi fought included Roberto Duran, to whom he lost by points in a non-title fight in 76, and Seansak uh, Magasuran, to whom he lost in a 15-round decision in Thailand in 77, in an attempt to win his opponent's WBC 140-pound crown. Now, Mamby continued to fight into his 50s, but was forced to retire by the California State Athletic Commission following his last loss in 2000. Now, at the age of 60, Mambi announced a comeback which was having taken place in La Paui, uh, Idaho, at the P. Niwas Community Center at the Nez uh, Perce Tribe, in a car that was subsequently cancelled. Now, Mambi fought several weeks later, weighing in a little bit over a welterweight limit at 149.5, and lost a 10-round decision to journeyman fighter Anthony Osborne in the Cayman Islands. As a result, he became one of the oldest boxers to pair, appear in an officially sanctioned bout, and it was uh, Mambi's loss, 11 loss in his last 14 fights. Now, Mambi was known for his ability to take punches, as in 85 professional bouts, he was stopped only once, that by an opponent who was several years younger, Daryl Coley, in uh, 1993. 
So let's put this in perspective. From 1969 to 1983, all the fights he had, the great, the great uh, boxers he fought, he was never knocked out. And this was a TKO. Now, just to, to recap uh, a little bit here, uh, some some interesting uh, uh, opponents through the years, and uh, he uh, lost a big fight. The last big title fight he had that I uh, remember watching was, of course, for the USBA uh, uh, New York State Welter title in 1989. But he also went up for the USA New York State Welter title, which he won in uh, 19, uh, 1990. So here, here we are. It's, uh, it's uh, quite, quite the, uh, the road for being a world champion to a New York State champion. But you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, back in the day, the USBA and the NABF had a lot of great contenders. Now, we fought Glenwood, Glenwood Brown uh, twice, winning and losing, of course, and it was a non-title against uh, Glenwood, which he won. But um, he fought uh, uh, quite, a, quite a number of ten, uh, contenders, Jorge Vaca, Rene Arred Ar 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 Donda, Buddy McGirt as well. Uh, Billy Costello was undefeated, of course, when he fought him. Uh, you're looking at as well uh, Monroe Brooks, very underrated uh, fighter, way which he defeated in Cleveland. That was, a, that was an interesting night. Um, and uh, Joe Com Compiano, when he won the title, uh, uh, I mean, well, defended the title, he was 56-2 and two at a time. And, of course, Maurice Watkins, 53-1. and one. Esteban was 57-4. and four. But uh, other fighters are keynotes. Marion Thomas, back in the day. Jean-Baptiste uh, Peveda de Vachy. Uh, Cézanne Morgan, who was almost a... Uh, uh, Coming, coming out of the amateurs, becoming a, a pro champion. Cervantes was 53, 10 and 1 when they fought. Duran was 54 and 1. Harold Wesson, very underrated fighter, he took on. So it just goes on and on about the top contenders. But Angel Robinson Garcia was probably the most interesting match in Miami Beach. And if anybody knows that fighter, he has over 200 pro fights, winning 124 and losing or drawing uh, 81. But, I mean, uh, and Victor Ortiz, Ortiz I don't, don't want to forget uh, Victor Ortiz, very, very strong fighter. And, uh, of course, I, t I, I almost uh, made a mistake on this. He didn't fight Adolfo, but he fought Edwin Verrett, which was Edwin's uh, 14 win. So, I mean, it was kind of weird, though, because you read Ring Magazine or Boxing Illustrated, Mambu was always on the undercard of the big fights and what he call... Uh, uh, the, the TV fights but I remember all those undercards with Holmes Don King liked him you know he would he was he was good money he was like a two dollar steak eh? he couldn't get knocked out because he just take punches and punches and punches and he didn't hit hard but like I said perfect opponent for up-and-coming fighters but like I said when you win board and you lose you couldn't stop him from fighting because he would never get knocked out so if the guy doesn't get knocked out, and if you're from the Bronx, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't matter what what part of the Bronx, you're pretty tough. And for me, pound for pound, uh, other than George Chavallo, all of the fight George Chavallo had, never got knocked out, never got knocked down. And uh, Saul was uh, was just like that. And, um, you know, I, uh, I regret never having a chance to meet him. There was talk he was going to come up, come in for a couple of fights in the Maritimes towards uh, the 1990s portion of his career in Quebec. But he, imagine he did a tour in Canada fighting in Calgary or BC. But uh, people like Scotty Bulldog Olson can tell you, fighters like him only come along once in a generation. Because to win that junior welterweight title at the time, like I said, uh, uh, that's a classic era because from 1972 to about 1984, my God, that division was hot. And you think the welterweight division was good. I mean, three pounds means a lot. Some people will move up and, and get knocked out. But, you know, uh, but the Ring Magazine uh, top tens and the Boxing Illustrated top 25 or sometimes top 35, you know, I think he was... He hadn't been ranked for a number of years, at least two decades, because he was always around someplace. So uh, that's the story of Saul Mambi. If you like what we're doing here, we're a vintage boxing podcast. Let us know what to like, comment, or subscribe. And uh, don't forget, if you saw him fight, you're one of probably a billion people worldwide that saw him either in yeah, pay-per-view or live or whatever. Because those home fights were getting, undercards were getting 75,000 viewers worldwide. So a billion people probably watched him fight because he was always around. Anyway, thanks for listening. Bye.